Hello. I'm grateful to welcome you to this moment, this extraordinary moment in our lives. Our theme for May has been in it together. And while we are nearing the end of May and gathering virtually still, our public distancing is making a statement about loving our neighbors as ourselves. It's not a way we ever expected to do, but as a community of faith, with the idea that we are better together when we're in it together as a community. Let's intentionally open ourselves now to the presence of God in our midst. Join me in this gathering, in these gathering words. Let's sing to our God a new song. Let every generation sing praise to our God. Let our voices give praise beyond words and ages, distance and cultures. May our words and deeds blend in harmony, giving voice to the spirit who moves among us. Accepting that confession is good for the soul, please join me in this responsive prayer followed by affirming words. Holy One, we confess that we struggle to understand one another and have a hard time hearing experiences that don't match ours. Open us to the presence of your spirit. We confess that we are confined by our words and that we try to confine your spirit within them and limit your spirit to our experiences. Open us to the presence of your spirit. Holy One, Open us to the uncontainable, wild presence of your spirit. Teach us to see you, to hear you, to feel you beyond our human experiences and understanding. Open us to the presence of your spirit. Now, hear these affirming words. The spirit moves alongside us, creating us anew in each breath. As many times as we fear, as many times as we try to keep God in the box of our human experience, the spirit remains with us, breaking us open. As many times as we fall short of living God's dreams for us, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The first scripture reading is 1 Corinthians 12, 3b through 14. No one can say, Jesus Christ reigns supreme, unless under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There is a variety of ministries, but we serve the same one. There is a variety of outcomes, but the same God is working in all of them. To each person is given the manifestation for the Spirit, for the common good. To one, the Spirit gives wisdom and discourse. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Through the Spirit, one person receives faith. Through the Spirit, another is given the gift of healing and still another miraculous powers. Prophecy is given to one, to another power to distinguish one spirit from another. One receives the gifts of tongues, another that of interpreting tongues. But it is one and the same spirit who produces all these gifts, 
and distributes them as she will. The body is one, even though it has many parts. All the parts, many though they are, comprise a single body. And so it is with Christ. It is by one spirit that all of us, whether we are Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, were baptized into one body. All of us have been given to drink the one spirit. And that body is not one part, it is many. The second reading is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 8, 11 through 18. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they all met in one room. Suddenly they heard what sounded like a violent rushing wind from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. They separated and came to rest on the head of each one. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as she enabled them. Now there were devout people living in Jerusalem for every nation under heaven. And at this sound they all assembled. But they were bewildered to hear their native languages being spoken. They were amazed and astonished. Surely all these people speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears these words in our native tongue? All Jews or converts to Judaism, we hear them preaching, each in our own language, about the marvels of God. All are amazed and disturbed. They asked each other, what does this mean? But others said mockingly, they've drunk too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd. Women and men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. These people are not drunk as you think. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it's what Joel the prophet spoke of. In the days to come, it is our God who speaks. I will pour out my spirit on all humankind. Your daughters and sons will prophesy, your young people will see visions, and your elders will dream dreams. Even on the most insignificant of my people, both women and men, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Pentecost us out, from the safe upper room to a large crowd of strangers, from a church birthday cake faith with slices for us, to a red balloon gospel that will escape our tight fists and float into the world, from the received wisdom of those in the responsible years between 32 and 60, to the excited ideas of teenagers who may be wrong, and the fractured wisdom of elders with memories leaking everything but love. Amen. In the poem we just heard by Marin Tiribasi, she speaks of a red balloon gospel. What is this red balloon gospel? Have you seen the 1956 short film or read the book, The Red Balloon by Albert Lamourice? It is the story of a little boy, Pascal, who lives in Paris. He is a lonely only child who one day finds a red balloon tied to a lamppost. Pascal brings the balloon home and his mother throws it out the window. Rather than floating away, 
it stays right outside the window. How like God's love is that? Always right there for us. Pascal and the Red Balloon have a series of adventures and obstacles throughout the story. And the greatest of these is when a gang of boys tries and succeeds in grabbing both Pascal and the balloon. The boys throw rocks at it and it does burst, at the balloon and it bursts. All the balloons in Paris come and gather, twisting together for Pascal to grab hold of and rise above and float above Paris. I think this is the Red Balloon Gospel of love, enduring friendship, and joy. A Pentecost story calling us to be a church that transcends the daily obstacles, big or small, working in love and friendship for all, calling us to be the spirit-filled gathering and gathered balloons, lifting those in need up. So please pray with me, repeating after me. God, whose love knows no ending, help us live a red balloon faith every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. The title of my homily is Spiritual Understanding, but I'm not feeling all that spiritual, and certainly I'm struggling to understand. I never expected to be preaching alone in front of a camera. You probably never expected to be doing worship this way either. It's especially difficult to be doing so in isolation on this high holy day of Pentecost, when we usually celebrate the inclusive diversity brought by spirit to the early church and to us. The ancient story of Pentecost the outpouring of spirit upon the crowd like a forceful wind shows us how the breath of God is shared widely and generously. However, today I'm struggling with the paradox of recent events and words of a dying African-American Minneapolis citizen telling the policeman who had a knee on his neck, I can't breathe. I can't breathe were his last words before he died handcuffed and face down in the street. My heart and soul feel more like these balloons that no longer want to rise than celebrating the outpouring of the liberating breath of God. I was going to offer a breath prayer to begin my homily but the breath of God that gives life feels choked out. I'm struggling to engage the theological meaning of the breath of God that can drive out the stillness of death. And I wonder to myself, do I even believe that right now? And yet, I still feel compelled to trust that somehow, some way, God is at work right now that our breathing in and out still has meaning and a purpose. That we are breathing in God and breathing out all that separates us from God. So perhaps what we all might need right now is prayer. Liberating and gracious God, cleanse us from all that clogs up our systems and weighs us down both individually and as a society. Turn our hearts to reach for you. Refine us until we shed the fears and worries that keep us from reflecting your light and love throughout this and all communities. Purge us from the language of excuse and justification that our lives might preach your gospel of love and justice to the world. Help us, we pray, to leave behind the shadows of racism that threaten to overcome us so that we all may live fully in the resurrection life to which the Spirit calls us. 
Thanks be to God. The chaos that we find ourselves witnessing and experiencing, riots in Minneapolis as well as the pandemic, is not likely so very different from the context of ancient folks in biblical narratives who were struggling to keep their faith, their trust in God, without the grounding and essential person they had followed to his death, Jesus, their rabbi and advocate. The story from the Acts of the Apostles tells us about this weird and wonderful experience during the harvest festival of Pentecost when just like Passover, eight weeks before, Jerusalem was packed with crowds of Jews from all over. In their not so distant memories was the violent and failed Jewish revolt against the Roman occupiers. But the wild and crazy appearance of spirit must have gotten their full attention and perhaps helped jog their memory about what and for whom Jesus advocated. He was the one who was criticized because he included everyone. Think of the wide variety of people in the crowd to whom the apostles were speaking. Jesus was ridiculed because he took sides with the vulnerable rather than the powerful. Think of how the Jewish people felt and the violence they experienced while trying to live within the oppressive Roman occupation. Consider the context of the original hearers of this text and what they may have understood about divided tongues of fire. There was a familiar similarity between a figure on a Roman coin and this text. A first century Roman coin showed divided tongues of fire over the head of Caesar as a sign of royalty and more importantly, a sign of divinity. The early Roman empires declared themselves sons of God. So what message are the Roman occupiers sending to the crowd of Jews or converts to Judaism who were gathered there? And finally, Jesus was rejected because he was not what people were expecting in the Messiah and he was crucified. He was executed in weakness and shame. Well, people were certainly not expecting 11 of Jesus' followers now promoted to apostles or deployed messengers to tell the crowd that the Spirit of God was responsible for them mysteriously understanding each other. What? They must have been intoxicated. They must have been out of their minds, on drugs. Or in the case of this week's riots, they must be criminals and arsonists. Why weren't those protesters arrested and stopped? In front of Roman soldiers meant to keep the peace, Peter had to raise his voice to be heard by the crowd that gathered in Jerusalem. What happens when people don't listen? What happens when the oppressed have reached the limit of their tolerance of the violence used against them? I learned something new from this quote from Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who understood that a riot is the language of the unheard. He said, quote, it is not enough for me to stand before you tonight and condemn riots. It would be morally irresponsible for me to do that without at the same time condemning the contingent intolerable conditions that exist in our society. These conditions are the things that cause individuals to feel that they have no other alternative than to engage in violent rebellion to get attention. I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard." End quote. Frederick Douglass also said, where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, 
where ignorance prevails, where any one class is made to feel the society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, and degrade them, neither persons nor property will be safe. So my prayer for us on this Pentecost is for us to listen closely to and learn to understand the language of the unheard before we rush to judgment or condemn condemnation of actions that we might not understand. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. responsive prayer. God of all, we come before you grateful for the many gifts, gifts you have poured out upon us. We give thanks to you for the ways in which you have increased our understanding 
of one another and of you. Help us to continue in this work of justice and peace, breaking down the barriers that separate us from each other and from you. Help us to strive against the isms, racism, classism, sexism, ableism, ageism, homophobia, and transphobia. Help us to listen to one another and hear your voice. Help us to look at one another and see your image. God of grace, we give thanks to you for the ongoing presence of your spirit in our pandemic embroiled world where we are enduring the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. For we are in desperate need of encouragement. Sometimes, O oh God, the love to which you call us sounds absurd. The impossible dreams over imbi of over imbibing do not let us be ashamed, God of grace, for believing in things that sometimes seem ridiculous but let us drink deeply of your love, your spirit, that the words of our mouths and the deeds of our hands may call others to believe, as we do, in your mercy and abundant love. Help us to believe that by your compassion and your grace, all barriers may fall and we may indeed be one kingdom united in you. We pray too for the families across our planet who have lost loved ones to coronavirus, struggling to grieve without the usual support, those who are fighting for their lives, the nurses and doctors fighting with them, those who put themselves at risk each day to provide essential services. And we pray, O oh God, for all the people involved in the riots, for the policemen who did their best for all of us who struggle to understand, enlighten us with new knowledge. We hold close to our heart those in our faith community. O oh God, we ask to shine your light of love on Bob's family after his death, on Bill, Faye, Shirley, Joan, Barbara, Betty Jean, Dawn, and many others, as we open our hearts now to pray. Trusting that God has lived and loved on earth and knows the struggles of our humanness, will you join me in the Lord's Prayer as you know it, or as shown here? Our Creator who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. May God bless you and keep you. May the living Christ walk beside you and show you a new way. May God walk behind you and give you new courage and strength. And may Spirit encircle you and empower you to be change, change that you want.